Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we'll be looking at my healer recommendations for new and returning players to World of Warcraft. This is one of the most frequently asked questions that I get on Twitch. There's plenty of people coming back or looking to play a healer and these are my recommendations for which healer you should think about playing. Now a big disclaimer if you enjoy a certain type of healer, for example you enjoy Wrestle Druid and you really like the healing over time hot play style, go ahead and make a Wrestle Druid, you're gonna have a really fun time. It might be a relatively difficult healer to start off with but if you enjoy the playstyle it'll push you to get better and better. On top of that we're looking at mythic plus and raid performance, we're looking at how healers or the rotation is like in mythic plus and raids, is it difficult, do you need to have prior knowledge and that is all coming down to reactive versus the proactive healers and we'll talk about that and on top of that we might look at some of the community perception in terms of how healers are viewed because if you're a new healer or new player returning to world of warcraft you might be doing a lot of solo content, pugging, and trying to get invited to pokes, trying to get invited to groups can be a determining factor of whether you're gonna like your healer or not. So we'll try to take that into account, but it's not going to be the defining factor in which healer to play. So I'm going to be using a tier list in this video in order to provide my opinions about classes that I feel are relatively easy for new beginners. And uh, again, S tier in this case is going to represent classes that are great for new players because a lot of times S tier is going to be classes that are reactive. If you see someone taking damage, you're going to heal them. That is great. It doesn't require prior knowledge of the fights. It doesn't require a lot of research. Those healers are pretty good to start off as a new player. It might be easy to pick up, but hard to master later down the line. If you're trying to progress really high-end content, even classes that are perceived to be easy still will require a lot of effort and a lot of research on your end. Outside of S tier, we'll have A tier. These are the classes that require a little bit more effort. And B tier are going to be a list of classes that are referred to as proactive. We talked about reactive healers, someone takes damage, you heal them up. Now proactive healers are healers that require you to know before damage happens. So straight away that requires you to know boss fights, read up on boss fights, read up on damage patterns. And if you play these healers in the B tier without actually doing any research, you probably will have a relatively hard time. So straight away let's go to the S tier and the best classes are my recommendations for most healers. Restoration Shaman, Holy Priest, I think most people are going to agree with this to some extent. The Resto Shaman and Holy Priest are one of the best healers right now in mythic plus content so the community perception is really really good not only they're one of the best healers in mythic plus content but they're also relatively easy to pick up so if we go to resto shaman right now resto shaman has one of the easiest healing rotations for mythic plus content riptide healing surge that's about it and if you have mana issues you swap healing surge to healing wave their mana consumption is amazing they are ranged being ranged is a relatively important aspect to a new player because I always would say that being ranged is easier than being melee. If you do get four set as Resto Shaman, all of a sudden your playstyle will not change a whole lot, but your totems or select few totems are going to shoot out chain heals, which are going to do a lot more healing. In raid content, it changes a little bit because Cloudburst totem becomes a much bigger kind of focal point of your rotation because a lot of your healing might be coming from Cloudburst totem, especially when you take into effect that your four set bonus goes into Cloudburst totem and a lot of people are going to overthink cloudburst a lot of people don't know how cloudburst works it actually includes all of your healing including overhealing and a portion of that is going to go into cloudburst 30 percent and all of a sudden you're going to be playing for these cloudburst windows in raid situations you're like okay i'm gonna put cloudburst down i have my healing rain down i have my for example wellsprings available i'm gonna use my wellsprings here maybe i'm playing vent here i'm gonna use my unleash life and chain harvest into cloudburst and i'm looking at it like you know a really big cloudburst is gonna pop off but without being too complicated about cloudburst totem if you're a new player don't overthink it just use it on cooldown in race situations and you're going to pick up different kind of boss fights where you're like okay maybe i'll hold my cloudburst maybe i'll use it later on and in mythic plus content i made a video about this you can just use Cloudburst at the very start when you approach a trash bag pull and most likely it's going to pop off when some people need healing halfway through the trash bag. So don't get too overwhelmed. Cloudburst Totem might sound somewhat daunting when I'm talking about it. It is not that hard to use and a lot of times just pressing it on cooldown is going to be a pretty good net gain both in HPS which allow you to do more damage in Mythic Plus, but we're not talking about healer damage too much because you're just a new returning player. I don't want to focus on DPS as much. It's all about that healing or keeping your members alive at this point. Now, Holy Priest is another healer that also has a very simplistic rotation. You can go a bit more advanced in terms of how you want to optimize your healing, but it all comes down to using Flash Concentration. And oh boy, Flash Concentration, you either love this or you absolutely hate it. It can become very boring, and that's my experience, but... 
If you play Holy Priest at the very start, Flash Concentration is going to be the way to go both in raids and mythic plus content. And what does it mean? You cast 5 Flash Heals, and then you basically cast Heal. You cast Heal for as much as you can, until you feel or the buff is going to run out for Flash Concentration, and then you use Flash Heal. It is a very simplistic basic rotation. Now, this is an oversimplified version. There is going to be Holy Word spells that you want to weave in, Serenity, Sanctify. You might want to use Chastise if you have the Force Set bonus because they all kind of synchronize. But at the very core of the rotation, your heal is going to be synergizing with so many different things. Your Flash Concentration, your Resonant Words Conduit, your Tear Set bonus. And your heal is going to be so big that it's going to topple people from the brink of death. So again, this is a quintessential point and click healer. You see someone take damage, you heal them. And you have one of the best single target healing abilities in the game through heal because it synergizes so well. Something that I recommend for any new healer in World of Warcraft because it'll give you a good basics of what it is like to heal in World of Warcraft. But what about AoE healing? How do I deal with AoE? Again, spamming heal and using your flash concentration has synergy with talents like Trader Light, which provides you with splash healing. And there is a lot of abilities the Holy Priest has, but they're not used all that often because of flash concentration. Now, in raid situations, again, there is going to be some sort of cooldown management that you need to do because you have two strong cooldowns through Divine Hymn. Then you also have a Holy World Salvation. Holy World Salvation has an insanely long cooldown, but that gets reduced by using your Holy World spells. So you get what I'm saying. You have these Holy Word spells that have really long cooldown that you should use and then use your kind of filler abilities and your filler abilities reduce the cooldown of Holy Word spells and your Holy Word spells. <laughs> Again, this is kind of like a circle that you have, but it all comes down to Flash Concentration and I hope you kind of understand where I'm coming from. It is a relatively easy rotation, but if you're trying to master it, there is a lot of different spells that you can weave in and optimize your healing and DPS. On top of that, as Holy Priest, during bursting weeks, you have Master Spell, which is great. You have external cooldowns or DPS cooldowns that give your party members to power infusion. And again, this might actually cause more issues than anything in raid because people will just argue who wants power infusion, <laughs> which happens quite a lot. But you do have a lot of kind of support capabilities on top of that and really high end. As Holy Priest, you almost consider a support healer where certain healers also play Night Fae. Again, Night Fae is the way to go in raid situations, but you can't play Night Fae in Mythic Plus to be a full support healer, or you can't play Kyrian to provide a bunch of damage with Boon of Descendant. Now, the problem with Boon of Descendant, you will have to go into melee, which can overcomplicate things, but it's not too bad. Now we're finished with S tier because I feel these reactive healers, Resto Shaman and Holy Priest, are both amazing for beginner healers, and again, you can play or start these healers right now as a beginner and then you can progress with these healers to the highest end content especially mythic plus content where these two healers are the best right now so you will get invited to a lot of the groups if you play resto shaman and holy priest now let's go to a tier and a tier is going to be i have to mention it it's going to be the melee tier this is going to be holy paladin and this is going to be miss weaver monk now why am i including melee healers in a tier because I consider melee to be more difficult than ranged when you first start playing the game. And this is evident for a lot of dungeons out there, especially like Halls of Atonement, where there are frontal abilities. And if you stay in front of the boss or in front of the mob, you can't die. So you need to know prior knowledge of those dungeons. So now let's go to Holy Paladin. And I don't think Holy Paladin is overly difficult healer to play. I think the rotation is actually pretty easy. And the rotation or the healing has been really simplified with the Covenant choice for Necrolog. But the fact that you need to go into melee, use your DPS abilities that will in turn provide you with holy power and that holy power can be converted to extra healing, which means you need to feel comfortable in melee. And sometimes when everyone's losing HP, maybe people are dying, it's, it's becoming very chaotic. You might forget where you are, you might get or step into a frontal and it might become too overwhelming, but with practice being in melee can become a really, really fun playstyle. Now, Holy Paladin, a relatively simplistic healing rotation made simpler with Necrolord because all of a sudden you have consistent healing and dps necrolord is a lot easier to play than ventir if you played or know about ventir ash and hollow before it used to be this insanely long cooldown that provided so much healing and so much damage but outside of that cooldown holy paladin felt pretty weak that kind of changed with necrolord because now you have a lot more consistent aoe healing and you have consistent single target healing through wall of glory and light of dawn and they all synchronize and all of a sudden your tier set bonus also feels pretty good Holy Paladin is a lot easier to play both in raids and mythic plus content. You provide good tank healing through beacons, especially in raid content, because that's one of the reasons to bring a Holy Paladin. A Holy Paladin might not be the most mobile healer, but you don't need mobility when you have bubble. 
when you have this insanely strong defensive that prevents all of the damage happening if you know you messed up really badly and you're about to die pressing bubble this is going to be a lifesaver and in high-end content having an immunity especially in a lot of the mythic plus content is really really powerful unfortunately holy paladin is not as good as it used to be if you were paying attention to a lot of the meta in shadowlands holy paladin used to be the absolute s tier or s tier of everything everyone used to play holy paladin both in raids and mythic plus ashen used to be the king a lot of that has changed holy paladin has lost some of its power it's not the worst healer it's not the best healer there will be players who are doing the highest content in mythic plus and raids as holy paladin but it's not as good as it used to be and the community perception might be a little bit lower if you're trying to get invited to those mythic blue skis or raids and misfire monk misfire monk is another really fun healer and again it is a melee healer it has a rotation for melee dps that you need to follow because that rotation for melee dps is going to provide you with additional healing because you you will be running rising mist talent and you will be using ancient teachers of monastery legendary all of those things kind of synergize and force you to go into melee and have this simplistic 1-2-3 kind of DPS rotation that will provide you with healing and also extend your hearts and things like that. Again, Rising Mist is a pretty cool talent. Mystery Monks is one of the most mobile healers in the game. If you're like me who enjoys healers that are fast or classes that are relatively mobile, because the more mobile you are, the easier it is to avoid bad abilities. And Mr. Monk is the king of mobility. It is very, very fun. Now, Mr. Monk HPS and the four set bonus can be a little bit difficult to play, depending if you really want to min max it. But the HPS of Mr. is really, really excellent. The passive damage and rate is good. In Mythic Plus, the overall DPS of Mr. Monk is on the lower end, which kind of trickle down in the community perception viewing is misweaver as a pretty bad healer which is complete nonsense misweaver can actually do really 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 well in mythic plus especially if you're not pushing those high-end content misweaver has really strong healing especially they have really strong single target healing combo with suiting miss enveloping miss and vivify which kind of complement each other to provide you with really good single target healing when your tank is about to die now when it comes to misweaver monk especially in raid content their mana consumption can be pretty but if you're using refreshing jade wind which is a great talent or hps talent when people are stacked up it is a pretty popular choice right now you're going to be using yulon and yulon is a pretty hard ability to maximize without running out of mana so a lot of the times as a mystery monk you might want to ask your balance through it can i have you innervate and kind of pair it up with your yulon ability now if you cannot do that there are talents that you can't spec into you can use red crane and all of a sudden, a lot of your mana issues might be gone. So there are ways to play around Mistweaver weaknesses by sacrificing some portion of your HPS, but that is dependent on how many mana issues you have. And there is a ranged Mistweaver build available out there where you don't have to go into melee. You can just sit in range and just cast your healing abilities. But my honest advice to you, if you're looking to play a ranged healer, there are far better options to play than a ranged Mistweaver. Mistweaver really shines into melee when it's required to fist weave and that rising mist talent does really carry in certain fights and now we're going to the b tier and again this is going to be relatively simple we only have two healers left that is going to be a restoration druid and discipline priest i don't think this comes as a surprise when i place a discipline priest here i think a lot of people might argue about my restoration druid kind of ranking but these two healers are proactive healers you need to start applying your rejuves or your atonements 10 seconds before damage happens this is really, really evident in raid situations. If you don't do that, you will have poor healing. You will not perform as you expected, and you're just not going to have a good time. Now, let's go to Restoration Druid. Restoration Druid is actually the king of HPS, and the HPS the Restoration Druid provides right now is actually insane. It is the best HPS healer right now in raid, and if you know or if you do the practice in terms of mechanics, and you look at the damage patterns of boss fights, you will be the top healer in the raid. A lot of the times people view Resto Druid as a really easy healer to play. Just press Rejuve, bro. It's easy, man. Just rejuvenate. But if you actually play Resto <laughs> if you actually play Restoration Druid to a high extent or to a good extent, you'll notice that it is a very cool independent healer. It has multiple things. Again, Night Phase is the way to go in raid situations. You're going to have Convoke, Flourish, you're going to have Tranquility, and then on top of that, you're going to have a tier set bonus or the four set bonus that requires you or a lot of the times your third swiftman is going to bring or give you tree of life you might look at the boss fight and you might look at the damage partners you know like okay i'm gonna hold my swiftmans i'm gonna wait for my third swiftman i'm gonna use it during convoke i'm gonna convoke and i'm gonna hope for flourish if it doesn't happen i'm gonna use my flourish and again when i say hope for flourish that's your night fake covenant specific legendary that has a chance when you use convoke to get flourish and then 
Again, you need to know the damage patterns. You convokes your flourish, your tranquilities, all of those synchronize in a way that you can provide a lot of good healing, but you need to know when that damage happens. If there's going to be unexpected damage and you have no rejuvenations out at all, a lot of other healers are going to snipe. Some people might not be aware of sniping, but for example, someone takes a hit and they go down to 50% HP and you apply your rejuvenation when they get that 50% HP. Your rejuvenation is going to take time to apply. Resto Druid, especially in race situations, Mastery is a really good stat and Mastery requires you to have more hots on that player and they become stronger. You only have one rejuvenation. It's taking ages to heal them up. Let's say, for example, your Restoration Shaman heals them with Healing Wave or even Healing Surge. All of a sudden, that rejuve that you applied is going to go all into overhealing and you're going to look bad on healing meters and your performance is not going to be as good. On top of that, I can almost guarantee you that a new player who is going to try Resto Druid, especially in raid content, is going to have a lot of issues with mana because it is very easy to fall into a trap of always trying to keep rejuvenation on everyone in the party. But if you actually try to do that, you're going to run out of mana quite early if there's nothing going on, keep rejuve on tanks, priority targets and help out with dps and then when you know if there's damage happening in the next 10 seconds start your ramp start applying your rejuvenations damage is about to happen you're wild growing and then you're convoking you might get a flourish and even then using trinkets like even the alchemy stone is pretty good because you can combine that with spiritual clarity potion the sit down potion you can use trinkets like from brh black rock hold during the legion time walking this trinket actually provides you with a good amount of mana and you will have to play carefully as Resto Druid because they can run out of mana really early. If you're coming from like a Restoration Shaman who has really good or can use a really mana efficient rotation, Resto Druid, you can run out of mana if you're not careful and you don't play for your ramps. And in the Mythic Plus, as Restoration Druid is a very different covenant choices right now. You can play Necrolord, you can play Kyrian, High End Mythic Plus. If you're not doing High End Mythic Plus, just stick with Night Fae. Night Fae can be a very good or an obvious choice for Resto Druid, both in Raids and Mythic Plus. For example, Necrolord, Resto Druid, and High End Mythic Plus because you really enjoy the Necrolord build. And honestly, it's really fun. Adaptive Swarms flying to and from allies and enemies is a sight to behold. And let's say you try it out, you're going to be playing Feral Affinity, which involves Kitty Weaving. All of a sudden, you have a bunch of different abilities that you need to use in order to optimize your DPS. You have to shift into your cat form. You have a bunch of bleeds that you need to apply. You have AoE swipe that you need to use. And now you almost have a different rotation for your DPS and a different rotation for healing. If you're not trying to optimize your DPS and you're just trying to do the bare minimum, just applying Moonfire, just applying Sunfire, it's a relatively easy build to play. So this is why I say that for a lot of people, Resto Druid will be viewed as a relatively easy healer to play because they have such a good HPS. But I feel the skill ceiling for Resto Druid is really high because you have Necro Lord, you have Kyrian, you have Kitty Weaving in Mythic Plus. And in raid situations, if you don't know the boss patterns, if you don't optimize your cooldowns, you will have a relatively bad time. Now onto Discipline Priest. And Discipline Priest can be compared to Resto Druid in a lot of different ways. These are the ramp healers, especially in raid situations. You need to know before damage happens. For example, as a Restoration Druid, you're applying Rejuvenations. As a Discipline Priest, you're applying Atonements. Atonements are going to be applied most likely to Rapture, so you're applying Shields. If you're applying Shields to people who already had the damage happen, it's not going to do a whole lot of things. This is why Discipline Priest is not played that often in Mythic Rating content, because it kind of really shines in these burst AoE healing fights. There are a couple of fights in Raid where fit Discipline Priest really, really well, but most of the time right now in 9.2, most of the priests are going to opt into Holy because Holy is A, reactive healer, B, a lot of HPS, and C, easier to play. Discipline priests are kind of rare to see right now in Mythic Plus and Raid content. But I'm not saying you should not play Discipline Priest. Discipline Priest, in my opinion, is one of the most fun healers to play because it first introduced the whole thing of DPSing and healing through your DPS because that's how atonements work. In Raid situations, you're applying your atonements with Rapture, you're applying your shields to people, Damage happens, then you go into your DPS rotation. DPS, ramping rotation, and then you have different covenants that change all of that in a significant way. For example, Kirin is going to be a lot different with Queen of Descended. You might have Ventir. Ventir is kind of coming back into the fray in terms of raiding as well. So there is a lot of different options you have as a Discipline Priest. And in Mythic Plus situations, Kirin is the way to go. Boon of Descended is definitely the way to go. It provides you with a lot of damage. But if you play Boon, if you play Boon of Descended, it does require you to go into melee and it requires you to have or to not mess up. You really want to use your Ascended Blast, Ascended Novas and these 
high AoE trash back pulls. And if you have to do something else, you are going to get punished and your healing is going to be lower and your damage is going to be lower. So how do I say you really need to enjoy Discipline Priest to play Discipline Priest right now because again, their HPS is not as high. They're relatively hard to play. Most of the priests right now are going to go into the Holy Priest route, but I can tell you that Discipline Priest is really fun to play. And if you play a Priest class, you have two really good options in terms of Holy Priest and Discipline Priest to kind of hone your skills as a new player in World of Warcraft. And this kind of concludes my list of the healers that I would recommend for a new player. Again, this video is relatively long, but I also wanted to showcase what the healing class is about. So for the people who are coming back to the game, they might be like, okay, I want to play an easy healer, but again, I'm going to watch this video and then I'm looking at Rest of the Druid and Discipline Priest and I really like this healing over time. I really like this cool dependent healing that Rest of Druids are, or I really like this DPS and, and heal through DPS type of playstyle. I really like Discipline Priest. And you might think about playing a harder healer because you enjoy the playstyle. I honestly truly believe that playing the healer that you enjoy the most is the best value for your subscription because you are paying money to play this game. So why not pay money to a game that you enjoy playing instead of trying to play healers that are the best. So guys, thank you for watching this video. I know it was quite long, but I really want to know your opinions about the list of healers that you would give for a new player to play. Would the list be similar to this? What would you change? Do you think maybe Rest of Jude should be easier? Do you think maybe Miss Weaver should be higher? Again, let me know guys. Let me know how you feel about my list. Let me know if I missed out on something. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next guide.